Hello YouTube, it's Das Gregor, and welcome back to a new Linux First Impressions and the very first First Impressions for 2014. We are getting closer and closer each week to finishing 52 weeks of 52 unique distributions and reviews. This week we're looking at Matrix Linux. Leandros edition. Matrix is a penetration based Debian Linux distribution. It comes out of India and its main purpose of course is for security testing, penetration testing, uh, being able to hack properly into systems and fix problems this is not a system that's meant to do malicious work, but more of what might be used in a security setting. Matrix Linux comes with many very good applications. If we look in here at their arsenal, you will see as I briefly go over these many different groupings that they have a lot to offer when it comes to tools that you can use for just about any type of security work. They've tried to install a well-organized grouping of just about anything you'd ever think of. Now, the installation of Matrix was quite simple. It is actually meant to go onto a uh, USB stick I, I, I resend that remark. It's meant to go on a CD or in a virtual machine, at least this newest version. And while I could have done that, I decided to go ahead and install it onto one of my partitions. It installed very easily. It was a very simple installation. Asked a few questions about the partitions I wanted to use, usernames and IDs, and it went ahead and installed everything. Out of the box, everything seems to work. I did have a few problems here and there, and this is using an older version of Debian. It's actually using Squeeze instead of the Wheezy repositories. Because of that, I did run into a lot of small problems with different application versions. For instance, I could not install the simple screen recorder with this, even with Linux for you and me's caddies little package because this is actually a I believe a 32-bit OS and his package was meant for 64-bit OS but on top of that there are certain things like QT wanting version 4.7 and this one only has 4.6.3 and while I did my best to install some of the newer stuff it just didn't seem to work it finally went through and accepted it excuse me and then it failed on many different ways and I gave up so right now I am using uh, the desktop I'll show you here in a second under sound and video the desktop recorder is what I'm using right now I tried to install GUVC view but for some reason it doesn't want to see my hardware there are like I said a few bugs in this system and what you see here is everything that it pretty much came with, with the exception, of course, of the sound and video. What I did find was when I first got in here, I said, isn't there any software installed in this machine? And then I found that if you go into the edit menu, that they had a lot of things right here disconnected so you couldn't see it. So I had to enable a few of these menus so I could see some of the applications that I had installed. Synaptics runs on this pro on this setup without too much hassle and it does open without issue. I was able to install some new software through it. And if we were to look for instance at QT GUI, um, you'll see that I actually did successfully install 4.7 of that, but for some reason uh, simple screen recorder still didn't like it hiccuped, blew up, etc. One thing that I did find, and I'm not sure if it's a bug or if it's just me not knowing Debian that well, 
was I was trying to set up repositories so that I could get some newer versions for Squeeze. And if I went into here to settings, repositories, and clicked on it, all it would do is say that repositories had changed and that I needed to update them. I'd update them and it really didn't do anything. What I ended up having to do was actually edit the etc apt slash source dot lists file to include a few extra repositories that I was trying to download load from. Other than that, <clears throat> this system is good, I think, as a unitasker system in regards to it has great functionality for all kinds of different security and penetration, hacking and cracking type testing. But it's not going to be something you want to use as your normal desktop. One, even though this version came out September 27th of 2013, it just is using very old software, very old versions. It's Now, they should be coming out with something new. I believe if we go into the download section here, you'll see... Well, I maybe I was reading somewhere else where I thought I saw that it was only going to be supported until February. Um, must have been something else I was looking at. Right here, though, you can see that their downloads. You can see the Matrix Leandros edition here came out uh, September 27th, and their older versions down here. Now, this one is the only one that does come with a virtual machine image that you can download and install so that you don't have to install it to the system. And I would suggest that you probably use that if you're going to use the system for penetration testing or, or for any using any of the other tools. Now it's all locked down very much like right here. Scripts currently forbidden. For any site you go to, if you trust them, you're going to have to tell it what you want or configure the options just to allow it. It is very much security conscious in its distribution. The tools seem to be well organized and other than those simple things there were no other issues except that when I was in the live CD version I could not get my wireless to work and then afterwards I was able to get my firmware transferred over but the wireless although it would see my network and I'd configure it, it would not talk to my network in a wireless environment. I did end up having to use this inside of uh, the Ethernet wired environment instead, which works okay. And in my opinion, if you're going to be doing this kind of testing, you probably want to be in a wired environment instead of a wireless environment. If you were using, of course, virtual machine, it could simulate a wired environment with your OS and that would probably work just as fine but I did want to bring up that as a hiccup other than those few things everything else on here is very nice you can see that it has kind of that Greek mythology theme and I, I like the colors I, um, I'm more of a, a browns kind of bronze kind of guy so I enjoy just the look and feel that this this desktop has and as I said the menu system is quite simple everything else about this is pretty good oh one other thing I was going to bring up they do have a, a page on here that you can see the developers of matrix and if you go to team you can see all those that are on the team which I think is it's nice sometimes to put a face to a really good distribution even if you can't see their face very well in some cases but nonetheless it is always good to put a face to those that have put together everything and organize the tools they do have while well, I'm still here a forums area and a little bit of information about their arsenal an interesting distribution if there's nothing else to say and like I said though it's more of a unitasker type system if you need to do penetration testing and you need to just throw something on there this will do it for you uh, it did not break after I did updates to the system which is always a good thing even though it's using squeeze 
and an older stable version of Debian. It just didn't have a very robust desktop with anything extra. Of course you can always go in there and install what you need to install. When I compare it to what I remember about Pen2, which was a penetration testing that was Gen2 based last year, I, I kind of have a feeling that Pen2 had a little bit more to offer and was slightly a bit more stable in regards to its configurations. But it's always good to have a second option when looking at different products. So Matrix gives you another option to pen to. And all in all, pretty decent. So I want to say thank you for watching in 2013. And I hope you all enjoyed your Christmas present that I threw out there. That was a lot of work, but I think well worth it. And I know that you guys have been wanting a Gen 2 handbook review installation guide for a while. I was a little nervous about doing it because I knew it would take about 10 to 12 hours and two and a half to who knew how many hours of video recording uh, just to make sure everything worked. And plus, if anything goes wrong, you got to start over. It's not like you can just reset your operating system to a previous point so that you can continue forward again. If anything goes wrong, and it did, in fact, on that one, I had to start the installation, I think two or, th two or three times because of little things here and there. And once I got going, luckily, once I got the momentum going, it was fine. But uh, it's not exactly like something you can just, oh, go back to another save point and, and move, move forward from there. You'd have to start all over to get it back to that spot and then start taping again. So I was really nervous about that. But it all turned out okay. There are five parts, each about a half an hour long. And then, of course, there is a 50-minute uh, quick install, which will tell you just pretty much this is what you do step by step to get it installed on your system. So I hope those who are interested enjoy it, and I hope uh, it helps a lot of people out. As I always say, if it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, I hope you're enjoying it. Enjoy the new year. Enjoy everything else that's going on. Thanks for your views. Thanks for your subscribes. Thanks for all your comments. I appreciate it everybody out there in the community that likes Linux and just wants to learn about these interesting flavors distributions that few have heard of and thank you again bye